Welcome guys, welcome. Uh, my name is Vera and today I'll show you how to make our copy of Paul Cezanne's original The Three Skulls, but we are making a reproduction, so this is my version of it. Um, and you're gonna paint your version. Now just to warn you, this is a very difficult piece, so um, prepare some patience because you're gonna need it. You're gonna need a lot of patience to do this. And of course, go at your own pace, pause this video whenever needed. Now let's quickly go through our supplies to make sure we have everything that we need for today. First thing you're going to need is a canvas. I have this pre-sketched canvas. Hopefully all of you uh, came with pre-sketched canvas. There are uh, links to the outlines in the description of this video. So if you don't have a sketch yet and you're wondering where you can find the outline, it is in description on this, of this video, you can find the outline for this painting. So make sure you pre-sketch it. This canvas that I'm using is 12 by 16 inch. You're welcome to use the same size or you're welcome to use smaller size. We have two different sizes for outlines. Uh, one for this one, you might need to um, put together the two pieces. And the second one is for smaller canvas for eight by 10. So it's completely up to you which one you're gonna be using. And just to let you know how to transfer the outline onto the canvas. We usually do it through the window. So we put paper underneath, a uh, printed paper underneath the canvas and put it over the window so the light shines through and then you just outline it. There are many different ways you can use the copy paper that you can buy uh, in many stores actually, but we usually recommend doing that through window or through glass and a light source, such as maybe glass table and putting a lamp underneath, whatever works for you guys. And another thing we would recommend if you, you might want to fix um, your paper with like a tape on the back of your canvas before you do that so it doesn't wiggle back and forth left and right and so on. So it just makes it a little easier for you. But however you transfer it, it's your choice. Um, just make sure you have it pre-sketched. All right, then after that, you're going to need a couple of brushes. Ideally, you want to have about three different brushes here large, medium, and small. In my case, they're all on like medium-ish size. So this is medium, large, medium, small, and just regular medium. This is what I'm gonna be using. In my case, my brushes are square. However, if you don't have square brushes, pointy brushes will also work totally fine. You don't have to have square brushes. And of course, we're gonna need paint. I will be using primary colors only. So I have yellow, black, red, white, and blue, and I'll be mixing them into all shades that we need for today. However, if you have pre-mixed brown, it, that would be very, very helpful to have. So make sure you grab that if you have it. If you don't have it, that's not a problem. Don't worry about that. I don't have pre-mixed brown either. We will mix it together and it's gonna work out just fine. And also make sure you have a piece of paper towel and of course water. All right, so what are we gonna start with? Is we gonna start with black here? We're gonna start with the background, with this dark, dark section. And we'll do it one color at a time. And of course, you can refer to that image there. And you will see this, this and that image slightly different because of the lighting that I have. The light that I'm using right now, I'll actually show you this light. It's um, more like a daylight, blue light. So that's why this it gives it a little bit of blue undertone. And that one is a bit warmer because I took it on a sunny day outside. So that's the only difference is the light. And you will notice that with any light. If you paint under blue light, everything is gonna look a little bluer, and if you bring it outside on a sunny day, it's gonna look a little more yellow. All right, so I'm gonna start with my medium large brush, this one, and I'm gonna start with a black paint. So I'm gonna actually go and outline in a way my skulls here. So I'm gonna start with the skull. You see I'm doing mess, messy brush strokes, that's for a reason, so don't skip that.
And you can always refine shape. If, for example, now you mess up something, that's okay. This is just a backdrop, right? We're gonna work in layers. So when we get on our actual skulls, which is gonna be almost the last thing, that's where you're gonna refine the shape. You're gonna look over that again and see. Does this shape look accurate? Is everything good? And if you don't like it, you will have a chance to fix it and change that. So on this one, I'm not gonna go as far down here with the black. And there are a couple more spots where I want to add a black on this upper part before we move away from there. So I'm going to add a bit of here. And you will see I'm just adding it very brush-strokey with my medium, medium large square brush. I'll add some here. And don't be afraid to add a little too much because all the rest of the colors we're going to add over that on top. So you're gonna be able to cover anything, any mistakes that you may potentially make. So too much is definitely not a problem here. So this is the amount that I'm gonna add for now. I'm happy with it. Again, um, if you added a bit more, you can always get rid of whatever extra you added that you don't need. But also, you can always add later more black as well. This particular painting doesn't have to be done in a particular order. Whatever order you do it, it's still going to work. Now, I kind of want to switch to a different brush because this brush is a little too big for me. So I'm going to go with a smaller brush here. Any smaller brush will work, but I'm still going to be using my square brushes. I'm going to try to literally use only square brushes today. And let's work a little bit on the skull. I'm going to bring it closer. Because, you know, great option to have, right? So, I'm going to go right here. Definitely, let's spread it a little. And so, I'm going to color black fully. I'm gonna go down here. So for, to make final lines, I'm using the top edge of my brush. Cause you see when I use top edge, I can make really fine lines. And this is a full width, right? So I can make anything in between as well, depending on how much I push in my brush and how I use my brush. So that's why I personally absolutely love square brushes. Cause they're super, super versatile. So I'm going to add here a little bit more than what I want to see in the end, but only because other colors I'm going to overlap over this black. So I'm going to make it thinner with the other colors once we get onto the other colors. And you would probably notice, if you painted with us before, you would know that we never do that. We never start with black. We always start with the lightest color and then work our way to the darkest one. But the reason why we actually started with black here is we're going to trim this black. We want this black almost as an underlay. Do you see? It kind of is an underlay under, under everything. So as we shape everything with the rest of the colors, we're going to trim this black. It's kind of really cool and very unique technique that we don't often use. But a lot of very famous artists wear painting in this technique, so we're going to do that.
All right, before I move too far, let's add black on the face too because all this black, we kind of want to add it right away too. You don't have to add black to the areas that don't have black. For example, right here, right, uh, there is no black there. So technically, you don't have to. I went a little bit further to be able to trim it, but you don't necessarily have to. All right, nose. Okay, that's pretty good. Our first skull is on the way. Now we're going to move to our second skull. And we'll let black everywhere where it belongs on our second skull here. And we're going to start around. So, do you see there is area right here that has black and around here? So, that's what we're going to do first. Make sure that's let me move things around here. should be pretty solid right here. Same with here. Again, remember we can always trim that block. If it's not up to our liking yet, we can always change that. We can add more or we can take away. This way.
All right, and let's add, oh, sorry guys, I just added this. And uh, now let's add the eyes here just a little bit. And again, we'll trim it later. Alright, it's getting there. A little bit more here. And then we can add a bit on this side as well. a little bit more black right here. Great, we're on to our last one here. And I'm gonna continue going with the outline. And of course, if you can do these fine lines with a square brush, don't, don't do it, do it with a small pointy brush. Whatever brush works for you, really, guys. Now to the eyes. See, there is a lot of detailed work. Lots and lots and lots of details, and they're all very fine and very precise, I would say. The only thing you have a lot of wiggle room with here is the color. So with the color, you can definitely modify the color, and it will still look really good. But as far as shapes, you're likely going to need to stick with the shapes. Alright, and we'll add a little bit of black right here as well, just for the end of the table. Now, we're going to go on to our table right here, this bottom part, and we'll add a bit underneath, and then just a couple of lines here. So, we're going to start by just putting a touch right here. I'm going to add a 
have a line right here. Another line right here. Maybe a couple flicks underneath here, so from this line down. And again, you can always trim those, make them smaller. A couple right here, maybe. And another line right here, and this the entire corner here. I'm going to just paint with a block. And I'll add one more line here. And again, if you want to add a couple of flicks, you can. And we can always add that last two. So, no big deal if you don't do that right now. So, that's pretty much it for our block, at least for the foundation of everything for the first layer. Now again, as I mentioned, we're going to go back to our top and we're going to work on this section in between. So I'm going to switch my brush. That was medium, sorry, that was the small, medium small brush. And now I'm going to go with my medium big brush. So this one is still kind of medium, but much bigger. All right, here's a closer look the colors and the brush strokes and everything else. And I'm going to start with this purpley undertone color. So with something like this. So it's used in a quite a few spots. And some of it is darker. You see there's some darker one and there's some lighter one. How are we going to mix it? We're going to start by mixing gray. So I'm going to take some black. I'm going to take some white. I'll mix them up. And I'm going to start with the darker version. Then I'll take just a little bit of that gray on the side and I'll take red and I'll add it into it. This is already getting purpler, so you don't really need to add blue to this one for now. You can just use it as is. And I'm going to go somewhere around this upper part. We'll add it right here. You see I'm overlapping my black as well. to make it a little more solid. All right, now I'll take a little bit more white, add a touch of white to it, make it a little lighter, and with this little lighter I'm going to go underneath, so right here. And again, you see I'm overlapping, but also I'm bringing it down. You see, I'm trimming my black by overlapping other colors over it. And wherever you add it onto the empty background that doesn't have too much going on yet, so on a white canvas, you want to use a bit more paint. But as you start overlapping, you want to use less paint, so it's a little more transparent. Now, next one that I'm going to add is going to be straight gray. So do you remember that gray that we started with? I'm not even washing my brush. I'm just taking that darker gray and I'm going to go right here. I want some darker gray. And yes, I will cover some white canvas with it, but I'll also overlap this with it. And if you need to make more, feel free to make more. Right here to it. Maybe I will make it even darker. 
And with this even darker one, I'll add some right here. Maybe more. And you see that more, all of the canvas now is covered, or almost all of it right here. And that's okay, the rest of the colors will overlap. Not a big deal at all. Nothing to worry about. All right, let's add a bit more of this darker gray around these sections too. Add some more right here. All right, and I don't really want to be adding it anywhere else, so. I think I'm going to stop adding that darker gray. And I'm going to go back to that purple that we used. I'm going to wash my brush this time. And to this gray I just used, I'm going to add a smidge of white to make it just a touch lighter. And then some red to bring it back to that darker version of purple-ish color. See? It's a grayish purple color. And with this color, there are a couple spots where I'm going to add it. So I'm going to add it a little bit right here. I'm going to add it somewhere right here. And now we're going to make a lighter version of it by just adding a little bit of white to this color. Now this lighter version shouldn't be crazy light. This should be a little lighter. I'm going to go right here, add some. Or else maybe I'll go over this again just to make it a little more solid. And if you're working on wet, you will see your colors are gonna start blending, and that's okay, there's nothing wrong with that. If they start blending, let them blend. And I'm gonna add even more white to this after that. And I'll add just a tiny, tiny little smidge of blue. You see, just a little touch. And with this colder color, I'm gonna go right here. See, it's like a light-ish, grayish purple. All right, we have quite a few of those purples. Lighter, darker, we have blacks, we have grays. Now we're gonna move to our greens and blues because you see there are some colder shades of greens and blues that we don't have yet. We only have the warmer ones right now. So I'm gonna wash off my brush dab it off on a paper towel and I'm going to take some white again I'm going to start by making gray I'm going to take some white black mix them up make still fairly dark gray you see it's not light gray so on a darker side and to this gray I'm going to add just a little bit of yellow and it's actually going to turn into this greener color do you see you, add, you didn't add green, you just added yellow, but you see it turned into this greener hint color. And there are quite a few spots there that have that. It is still a very muddy color. That's what you want. You want that muddy color. There are a couple spots there. So I'm going to use just a little bit of paint on my brush. Not too much. I'm not going to blob it on. And I'm going to add it right here. You see? You see that shade of green. lightly overlapping so I'll add some here again very lightly overlapping I 
Okay, I'm going to add some right here. So there's a little spot right here. So I'm going to put it right here. Touch like that. Awesome. Where else? There's quite a few spots there. There are quite a few spots there. So I'm going to go with the same color somewhere around right here. So there's a spot here. This is the greener shade. There's a spot here. Um, if there's anywhere else that you personally want to add it, go for it. Again, you're allowed to do it differently um, as far as colors on your background. Then on your colors too, as long as you keep light areas, light, dark areas, dark, if you want to experiment and add slightly different shades, you can. It will still have the same feel to it. However, again, if you're trying to stay with more of an authentic reproduction and just try to copy it as close to the original as possible, then yeah, probably stick with the same colors and the same positioning. However, if you're just making it because you love it and you want to have your own version um, and you don't care how close it is to original, then yeah, replace the colors. Just keep the top dark, keep the skulls light, keep that contrast, keep that technique where we start with black and then we trim the black. So yeah. All right, so I added green. I think this is a good amount of green um, for every area. Now we're gonna move to our blue. So I'm gonna need to rock my brush. And you can even use the same spot for mixing. You can just add some white to it. You see if it's lighter. It might, I might have gone actually a little too light here. But anyway, we're gonna add a blue to that because we're trying to make more of a teal color. So this is not a straight blue, this is more of teal. So I think I've gone a little too far. So I'm gonna add a tiny smidge of black to dim it up a little bit, dim it down, um, tone it down a touch. This I still is a little bit too light, so I'm gonna add a bit more blue to it. This blue is also a dark color, so it's gonna bring it down a little and so I'm not looking for a straight blue, I'm looking for teal, so I have to add a little bit of yellow because teal is blue and yellow. Just don't add too much yellow because it's going to turn it green and you don't want it green. And again, this is still a little too light, so I'm going to add another tiny smidge of black. So basically this is just gray plus blue and yellow in different proportions. So continue mixing until you arrive at similar color or color that you like, but keep it on a dimmer, darker side. And there's a spot right here that has that, so we're gonna add somewhere around here. Oh yeah, that's a good color. And you can always try a smidge of color on your canvas to see if that's the right color. Don't commit to color until you're sure that that's the right color. And don't add those large brush strokes because it's going to take you some time to fix it if it's not the right color. I'm always trying to go on a side of caution, but if you want to live your life dangerously, go for it. Make color and commit to it. All right, in this corner too, we'll add some right here. I'm going to try to be tilting my canvas every now and then so you can see the color there without a glare because you know wet paint it's a bit of a glare to it all right this is a good amount of that blue really good and of course we're going to go right here it does have quite a bit of blue there as you can see so around green in here, put just a touch bigger. Awesome. I am loving this color combo. Like it's really coming together. And you see in certain areas, I kind of got rid of a little too much black, and that's okay. We can always add it back, not a problem. 
So I think I want to add a slightly lighter color blue and finish it up. So to the same blue I just used, I'm going to add just a little bit more white. We're not trying to make a very light blue, but we are trying to make a slightly lighter version. So I think this should work just fine. But again, I wouldn't know until I actually try it. So let's try it. I'm going to put it somewhere. Oh, yes, beautiful. You see, just a little bit. So I'm going to just dry brush it very lightly. So don't use too much paint on your brush. Just a tiny touch of paint on your brush. I'll add some right here, maybe right here. Let's take a brush stroke here and there to break it up a little. Where else should I add it? Maybe right here. You see there's a touch of lighter color there. And also, guys, if you want to, you can pull up the actual original by Paul Cezanne. Just put in a Google search, Paul Cezanne, the three skulls, and it will show up. So you can put the actual original or have a printed version of the actual original and try to match your colors. This is just how my vision of it, right? And me trying to make it as close as possible to my version of it because the version that you see on the screen is was painted by me based on Paul Cezanne's painting. However, if you would like to actually work from original, please do. All right, this is really, really great. And now I'm gonna add more on the And again, guys, just to let you know, this is actually darker than what you see because my lamp is really bright here. As you can see, everything is, looks a little lighter right now. Let me try to turn it off, actually. Yeah, do you see, it's depending on how camera picks up things, it actually can be much, much darker, but it is easier to see colors like this when everything is light. So I'm keeping it for that reason. But yeah, feel free to make top a little darker than this if you would like. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to go over it with the black again. I'm going to take some black, not a lot, just a tiny touch because I want to dry brush it on. And I'm going to go back and in certain areas I'm just going to dry brush a bit more black on. So we'll do this one right here. Try to stick with this brush strokiness. But also a little um, tip for you guys. If you find this is actually too brush strokey for you and you would rather have it smoother, you can always, while your paint is still wet, either grab a paper towel or a softer brush and just make it slightly wet and dab it off on a paper towel and go over this and just smudge everything and blend everything. I'm going to show you a little spot somewhere, but this trick only works if your paint is still at least somewhat wet. As your paint dries up, that really doesn't work. Let me wash off my brush. Dab it on a paper towel. So, for example, I want to smudge this section. Sorry, that's the wrong paint. Okay. This section. So, let's say I want to smudge this section. I'm just going to wash off my brush on a paper towel. And I'll do this. You see it does a bit of smudging, but the paint has to be wet for this. Once the paint dries, you can't really do that anymore.
All right, so my top is done. Again, feel free to put your spin on that. And if you want to do anything else, want to add anything else, go for it. Just maintain it fairly dark and make sure you use a couple different shades. Don't just do straight gray and that's it, nothing else. And again, remember, it's actually a little bit darker than what you see right now because, again, of the camera um, and of the lamp that I'm using here just to make sure you guys can see it well. All right. Exciting, right? One part done. Now I'm going to move on to... Let's show them side by side. Yeah, this is actually darker than what you see here. And I kind of lost a little bit of my green. You can, add, you can go at it back. Or not, I'm still happy with it, so I'm gonna keep it. I like it, even though I lost a little bit of my green here. All right, now I'm gonna move to my table. I'm gonna work on this upper part, and after that, I'm gonna move, work on the lower part. And only after that, we're gonna work on our skulls. And again, if at any point um, you feel like something went wrong there and you want to go back and revalue it, you can. That's not a mistake, you absolutely can. So I'm gonna make this a little smaller here, sorry guys. Yeah, that's helpful. That's great. So, uh, let's move here. We're gonna use a lot of different shades. Let's, look, let's take a really close look here. We're gonna use some blue, some greens, do you see some teals, some um, light greens, there are some beigey tones, there's some brownie tones, some orangey tones. So everything fairly warm except of light blues there. Nothing much of a darker colors. Alrighty. Yeah, okay. Let's make sure you can see both of them. I'm actually going to overlap. Awesome. So, uh, I'm probably not going to go with a large, medium, large brush here. I'm probably going to stick with the most medium size that I have, which in my case is this one. And you can start, technically start with any color, but I personally want to start with a lighter blue. There's quite a bit of blue, so I wouldn't mind getting in a blue undertone. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take some white to the inside. And to this white, I'm going to add just a tiny smidge of blue. And just a little bit of yellow, because we're not using straight blue. We're only using teal here. Nowhere there is we use straight blue. Yeah, this is nice teal. Let's try it somewhere. Oh yeah, beautiful color. Okay, so I'm gonna use that as an undertone for many areas. So right here, I'm gonna add some of that. Here, I'm gonna add some of that. Again, this is an undertone, so you're gonna cover a lot of that later. You can start trimming your black if you want to do so. You can go over your black in certain areas. I'll start, I'll add some right here too. So if you notice, maybe by now, I'm not using a lot of paint on my brush. I'm mostly dry brushing things, but also I'm making sure my canvas is covered. I'm not using not enough paint so that my canvas leaves um, blank spots. I'm using more than enough paint. I'm just not using too much. All right, I think this is really good for this particular color. For next one, I'm gonna go a little bit brighter green. So to this color, I'm just gonna add a bit more yellow, make it a little greener. 
and more white to keep it light. Actually, it's more yellow. Oh yeah, I think this should be great. But again, we wouldn't know until we try, right? So I'm gonna add a bit right here. Sorry, guys, I'm gonna need to make it dimmer. I'm gonna need to add a tiny, tiny smidge of black. So you see the tiny little dot here. Even more. Just a touch to make it dimmer because it seems really, really vibrant. And this is not the colors that this painting is using. It's all pastel tones here and, and they're all somewhat dim. None of them are very bright. So you don't have to stick with that. Oh yeah, this is the color now. So that's in right here. This section. Again, feel free to overlap and feel free to add a little more if you want because it's not our final color. Still gonna overlap other colors. You can always get rid of that that way later. Let's add some more here. There's a spot here. This color. Yes, good. All right, where else? Right here. Yeah, there's nothing, nothing much more in this color. That's pretty much it. All right, that's good. Now, next one, I want to start going into my browns here, which we don't have any just yet. And we're going to start with this more of a standard medium brown. If you have that, you can use it. If not, we're going to mix it. So this is the color we're going to start with, like a standard medium brown. I'm going to start mixing with, well, you can even mix it on the same spot, actually. Just add more yellow to this greener spot. And then a red. So red, you're going to start adding little by little. Add a tiny smidge, mix it up. Then add another smidge, mix it up. And another smidge, mix it up. Because I added it onto the spot that already had white mix, I don't need to mix any more white. But if you didn't have, if you're starting from scratch, then you're definitely going to need some white. So right now we have here, um, for those of you who are mixing from scratch, we have uh, yellow, we have red, we have just a tiny smidge of blue, and we have some white. So that's our components. And then it's just a touch more red. Oh yeah, I think this is the color. But again, we want to know until we try. Let's try it. It's good, but it needs more red actually, and white. So I'm going to add a bit more white, and a bit more red. Now I think this is more of a color that I'm looking for here. But again, wouldn't know until we try. Oh yes, that's exactly the color that I'm looking for. So with this color, I'm going to go right here. I'm going to very lightly add some. I'm going to dry brush it on. That's more here. You see, very dry brushy. Now let's go here. We will continue going with this color. And again, guys, remember to pace yourself if you need some break or you need a bit more time. This is a video recording, so you're free to pause it at any time. And then I'll zoom it whenever you are ready. All right, that's good. Now, to the same color, I'm gonna add white to make it lighter, and that would be my next color. So this nice, light beige color. And with this, I'm gonna go right here. Actually, I need more white. It's still a little too dark. And again, that's why we try it, right? Because you just don't know until you try. That is better. You see, it's much lighter now. So we 
going to go here, we'll add a little bit. What else? We're going to add it somewhere right here. See, I'm kind of adding it around sections that already have a darker brown. And now I'm actually going to add straight white. So I'm just going to take some straight white. And, and I'm going to go... And you see it lays on a bit transparent because I'm not blobbing it. I'm still, I'm still dry brushing it on. I'm kind of rubbing it in because some of the paint is still wet. So you will see that it will be going a bit transparent. And you see this brush stroke in this. I'm not avoiding this. I'm encouraging this. I'm trying to get it really brush strokey because this is what paint, this painting is all about. It is quite a brush strokey painting. You can see exactly which direction these brush strokes were going if you're working from a regional. A couple of lines here, like this. just to give it a bit more of that brush stroke texture. From here, or to here. All right, now a couple more colors left here. I'm not done. Next one, I'm going to add this yellowy brown. So to the same, if you still have this light beige, to that, just add a lot more yellow and some more white. So we're trying to make this beigey kind of sand color. We're not, we don't want to have it straight yellow, but we do want it somewhat yellowy and light. So. If you don't have anything to mix here and you're like, okay, you lost me. So what are you going to do? You're going to mix yellow with white and add a touch of brown too. If you don't have a brown, make brown again. If you know how to make brown. We already made it. Brown is yellow, red, and a touch of blue or black, whichever works. doesn't really matter. You can use with either. And white if necessary, but mostly yellow, red, plus a tiny smidge of either black or blue. That's how you make brown. So for you to make this color, if you're mixing from scratch, you're going to take a little bit of yellow um, with white and that tiny, tiny smidge of brown. So let's see. Oh yeah, beautiful color. You might even get it a little lighter. I'm going to touch my yellow. Yeah, that's perfect, I think. So this one I'm going to add right here. It's a warm color. And I'm going to add a touch of it here. And a touch here. Probably not much more. That looks good to me. And now I'm going to move to this redder color. So right here, do you see there is this redder color? So that's what I want. And again, you can mix on the same spot. If you still have this section where we are we mixing brown, beige, and so on. Just add a red to it. Literally just red, because you already have somewhat of brown there. So this should be a good color. Now, if you don't have that, what you're gonna need is you're gonna need to mix your brown again, and then take a tiny smidge of it mixed with a red and a white. So this is a red, white, and a smidge of black. Uh, sorry, not black, brown, smidge of brown. All those colors here are quite complicated. I know, guys, you're doing a great job. It's a lot of mixing. Oh, yeah. You see? 
It's like a dimmer red. Something between a red and pink and a brown, maybe gray, like that mixture color. A dusty rose kind of color. Again, if you don't get it right exactly, that's okay. It's not the most important color in this painting. It's very accent color here, so. So yeah, I'm ready. Again, using my dry brushing technique, my square brush, just a little bit of that, just a touch. And I'm gonna actually add this right here. Maybe just touch some in here. Just a touch here. All right, now the same color. I want to add a little bit on this line here and underneath because you see there's lots of that underneath. So we'll need as well. I think I'm gonna add a little bit right here, right here as well. And of course, right here. Alright, so I ran out again of this color. So let's make some brown to make that color. So I'm gonna make some brown. Brown, yellow, red, mix them up. Now to this mixture you can add either a touch of yellow or a touch of blue. Let's go with blue, but it doesn't matter. Either will work. Alright, here's my brown. Now I'm gonna take a touch of brown some red and some white and here we go we're back to this dusty rose color I think this is a good amount for this particular color. I don't really feel like adding more of it. If you want to add more, go for it. But I feel like that's enough. So I'm going to move to my next color, which in my case, I want to add more of a beigey brown here. So do you see? We have the redder sections, right? The pinker sections. But we need to add now, merge this um, browner sections. So that's what we're going to do. We're going to put them a little closer to one another so you guys can see better. You see, it's easier to see that they are side by side. All right, so brown. Do you remember we already have brown? So I'm going to take a little bit of that. I don't want to mix all of it. And I'm going to take some white and I'll add it into it to make this lighter brown. Oh, it's a little too light. So we'll take a bit more brown out of there. Yeah, that's pretty good actually. Maybe a little bit of this red into it to, to warm it up a touch. Or any red. Straight red will work too. Just to warm it up a little. Yes, great. We got some right here. And a little bit right here on the end as well. And we got some right here. And where else? Um, I'm pretty sure nowhere else that particular color. That's right here. 
The rest are lighter colors, so to the same color, I'm going to add a bit of white. Let's make it lighter. Let's try. Oh yeah, that's a good color for that. Maybe even lighter. So the same color, just added white. And I'm going to add it right here. Now, I'm going to take just a touch of that on the side. Add a yellow and a white. So I'm going to make this light, beigey, warmer color. You see, it's very light. I'm going to use it for that. Yes, that's good. So I'll add it right here. And mix it into those colors because they're still wet for me. If they're dry for you, not a problem. They don't have to be mixed. And with the same lighter color, I'm going to add some light here too. Again, if they mix, great. If they don't, not a problem. I'm going to add a little smidge here. And where else? Maybe just a little right here to lighten it up a touch. That looks pretty good. Oh, and let's add a touch here as well. You see right here, right by the line. Now, while that's drying, let's go back to our black. But what I'm going to do, do you remember that dusty rose color we used? So to that color, I'm going to add black. You see, turn into this darker, um, almost redder brown or something between gray, brown, and pink. This weird version because, again, that was mixed between red and brown and whatever else. And this is just adding black to it. So it's like gray with a smidge of red and a smidge of yellow. That's what it, yeah. If you were to mix this from scratch, you would be making dark gray. And then to that, you would be adding lots of red and a smidge of yellow. All right, and with this, we can add a bit more darkness. So right here, we can see, make up a smidge. Right here, we can add just a little of darkness. Right here as well. Um, possibly right here from the bottom. And right here from the top. Anywhere you want them, guys. If there are any other spots that you feel like, uh-oh, this is supposed to be darker, or this could be darker, and I think I'm going to like it, go for it. Feel free to add a bit of this. Yeah, this is good. And now I'm going to take straight black, and I want to add a bit more straight black here. So just some straight black. And with the straight black, I'm going to go right here. Uh -oh. I almost got some water here. All right, I'll add some right here. I'll go back to its line. You see, it's a little thicker on top, so let's add it again. Because I accidentally lost a big part of it. Some right here, and a little bit right here as well. Great. The only thing, well, actually, two things that I'm missing there is do you see there's a smidge here that I forgot? So, any brown ish, redder color, take that and just add that smidge. Perfect. Awesome. Now, white. White is the last thing on that bottom part. So, on this section. So I'm just going to take straight white again. Not a lot. We're trying to dry, dry brush. We're not trying to add blobs. And I will flick some from the bottom up. So we're going here, going here, add some right here. Maybe right here. All right. 
know, that looks pretty good. So do you see our two bottoms are done? Now we need this midsection because we haven't done that. So let's do that. And I'm gonna start with like light brown. So if you still have any regular brown, mix it with some white, make light brown. And oh, that's a little too dark. So let's add a bit more white to it. Let's see how this is. We'll try it. Oh yeah, that's good. So I'm actually gonna color this in ish with this i'm going to cover a lot of empty canvas that doesn't have anything going on yet with this and then i will add more layers of different colors there this is like a base All right, now I'm gonna add a bit more brown to it to make it darker again. With this darker color. Do you see it's not very dark, but it is darker than the first one. This one we just use this light one. So we'll make it a little darker and I'll add something here. Oh yeah, that's perfect. It's really working out, guys. Add some right here, just a brush stroke or two. And then I'm going to move to a more orangey color. So to the same color I just used, I'm going to add more yellow. And I'm going to add a smidge more red to give it more of a tint of orange. And again, let's try it because we... Oh yeah, that's pretty good. Could be a little lighter, so let's add some white. White, yellow, red, just to give it a bit more orange tint to drown out that actual brown. So more white, more yellow, more red. Add some right here. Anywhere else that you want to add it. And then we're going to add some lighter yellow. So I'm going to take straight white right here, and I'm going to take yellow. Mix it in. So that's just a white and yellow. And then to that mixture, you have to add just a tiny smidge of red. And the reason why we want it to be a warmer color. We're not looking to make it orange, but we do want it to be a warmer light yellow. It doesn't look like a lemon yellow. Now this color, I'm going to add a brush stroke here. Make sure it's nice and light. If you start adding it and you feel like it's too dark, add some white. Add some here. Uh, maybe a little bit here. All right, I kind of want to add a bit more of the darkness here. So if you still have that dusty rose color, use that. If not, make it again. Just take a bit of brown or red and white, mix them up. I'll just add a bit of that here to darken it up a touch. So I kind of lost, lost some of the darker sections. And then I'm going to take a tiniest, tiniest touch of black on any small brush or on medium brush if you're going to use the top edge. I'm going to add just a little bit of that right here. Oops. Right. May have been a little too much, but you get the point. Just a tiny, tiny little touch here. And anywhere else, if underneath you lost your black line, you can always add just a touch of it. In my case, it's all pretty much in the place except for just a few spots. All right, you see our bottoms look awesome. Tops look awesome. Now we need to move on to the hardest part, which is the actual skulls. So I'm gonna wash off my brush here. And again, guys, if you wanna take a break, now is the time. You wanna, um, you don't wanna rush yourself and 
you really want to take your time and go at your own pace and don't overwork yourself. You don't want to be finishing just to finish. You want to be enjoying the process. You want to be doing a great job. So if you feel like you are tired, rest. Rest is very, very important here. Yes. All right. Awesome. So, um, oops. Let's move this wire here. All right, guys, let's move to our skulls. So let's rearrange my setup here just a little. What I'm going to do is I'm going to start with this one. So I'm going to put them side by side so it's easier for you to see what's going on here. And we'll get a little closer to this as well. Because, you know, the closer the better. So I'm not really going to be using my medium large brush so I can retire it because I only needed it for the large areas. There are no large areas in this call. So I'll put it aside, but I will still use my actual medium and a medium small. So this call is, it has quite a few colors going on here. There is light bluey gray, majority of it. So it's like the base of it is this light bluey gray color. There's green, there's a bit more blue. Um, there's a bit of this greener, um, brown in a way. It's a mix between green and brown. I can't call it straight green, but I can't really call it brown either. So it's something in between. And there's a bit of darker gray. So, oh, and there is actual green right here. So that's the mixture that makes this call. So what are we going to do is we're going to start with this base. It's like a light gray with a tiny, tiny smidge of blue or purple. That's the color is the base of our skull. I'm actually need a bit more straight white because I don't want to accidentally smidge this warmer white that already can contaminated with brown. So I'm going to get a little bit more. Alrighty. I have that color with uh, I have new white, so that's wonderful. So we're gonna mix our color. Hopefully, I have a spot to mix it as well. Um, might need to get a new plate soon, actually. So let's try it here. So let's mix some white with blue with the black. We need to make it very light. So this is a great color, actually. It's just too dark at this point. So let's try to lighten it up a bit. Do you see? Let me put a smidge somewhere. Oh yeah, beautiful. Just the wrong shade. So let's take some more white. Gorgeous. This is such a great color, guys. That's exactly the color that we want. It's like a very, very light gray. As I mentioned earlier, you saw me make it. That's just white and blue. I mixed white and blue first and then I added just a tiniest, tiniest smidge of black. And this is the color that happened. I am in love with this color. It's nice pearl gray in a way. And again, don't be afraid of brush strokes here. We're not looking for a perfect smooth blending. That is not the goal here.
as you can see, I'm still managing to do this with that medium brush, but if you need a small brush at, at any point, please use that. You don't have to stick with uh, the brush that I'm using if it doesn't work for you. Use the brush that works for you, regardless of which brush that may be. Alright, that is a great first layer of this color. You can see just a nice backdrop. Now we're going to move to our next color. And for my next color, I'm going to use blue, bluer color. It's not going to be a full on blue. So to the same color I just used, I'm going to add a little bit more blue. So. Let's try it again. We wouldn't know. I'm aiming for this blue, so let's see. I think it's actually pretty good. It might be a bit lighter, so I might as well add a bit more white. Just to lighten up a little. No, no, it needs more blue. All right, third time is the charm, right? Yes, that's the color. And with this color, I'm gonna dry brush on a little bit of it right here. I'm gonna dry, okay, this is too close. Let's get rid of that. Dry brush on a little bit right here. A little bit on the top right here. You see just a touch. Very lightly. Uh, maybe a touch right here. Very, very lightly. You want to have almost like a hint of it there. All right, now I'm going to refill my brush and with a little bit more, I'm going to go right here. A little bit right here. Maybe a touch from the bottom up. And maybe a little bit here, but just very, very lightly. Actually, let's add a bit more dominant brush strip. Yeah, that's perfect. So, you see, just like a smidge. Awesome. Now, I will move to this greener color. So to the same color I just used, I'm going to add a little bit of yellow to make it more green. And I'm going to add this color. Do you see this greener color here? Again, let's try it. You see this greener? There's a bit of green here. Here, there are a couple spots. So let's try it. We wouldn't come into it until we try it. This looks very close. So, oh yeah, that's the color. So we'll add some right here, a little bit inside the eye, because as I said, we're going to trim our black by adding other colors over. I need to use a smaller brush for this too. Again, um, it's not a requirement for you to use a medium brush here. I am using medium, but it's again, you see, it's not a big brush overall. It's pretty small. So that's right here. Mm. 
maybe a touch here. Oh, need more green. Some right here for sure. All right, that's good for that color. Now we're gonna move to this brown or green color. So to the same green, if you still have a bit of that, which is perfect, you're gonna add a touch more yellow, just to make it a little more yellow. Do you see, you've got a bit more yellow and a tiny, tiny smidge of red, just a little, little bit. And it will give it this burnt kind of undertone. It's like a burned grass. It's brown, it's gonna get a little browner. I think this should be a perfect color, but again, we have to try it. Because you, you just don't know. Nope, not a perfect color. It's a little too yellow. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna add a bit more white to tone it down, actually, to bring the, because both white and black tone colors down, they bring the brightness um, saturation down. So I'm gonna add a bit of that. You see it's a bit more pastel now. Let's try again. Still not quite right, so I'm going to adjust it. I'm going to add a bit more red to it and try again and see what about now. Because again, just it's all about adjusting it. I think this is a good color right now. Maybe a bit more red and a touch more white. Another thing that white does, it makes it less transparent and my paint seems a little too transparent. So now I have this, and now I'm gonna go right here. I'll add a bit right here. Oh yeah, that's a good color. I'll add some right here. Add some right here on this edge. A little bit underneath. Some right here. Right here. And a little right here. And right here. Some on the very top. Awesome! So now I only have a couple colors left. Most of it is added, but what I don't have here is I don't have darker gray and I don't have straight white. So those are the main colors that I need to add. And then if you want to add any additional colors, you also can. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to start with my darker gray and then I'll finish with um, white. So again, just take some white anywhere. Uh, let's mix here. And then I'll take some black. I'll mix them up. It's not really a dark gray that I'm making. It's just darker than everything else I have there. But we're not aiming for actual dark gray. So don't make dark gray. It's, I would say it's about medium gray. If anything, and then to that medium gray, I'm going to add a touch of blue because it still needs to be a little bit colder. So I think this color should work really well, but again, we wouldn't know until we try. So let's try it. Hmm. Okay. Oh yeah, that's a good color, but I actually need it darker. So let's go a little darker here. Okay, yes, that's a great color. So I'm gonna dab off my brush on the paper towel because I need to dry brush it on, right? We can't have too much paint on our brush when we dry brushing, even this is too much. So I'll continue emptying to make sure I'm not adding too much paint so it doesn't look blobby, because I need it nice and light. You see this lightness, that's what we're looking for. We're looking for this very, very light touch. I'm going to add a little bit on the edge here. A little right here. Right here. Okay. 
definitely on a very bottom part here too. Hmm. Oh, eyes. So right here. Oh, too much paint again. A little bit inside this eye. So it's not just solid like you see there's just a tiny smidge there. So we'll add that little line going through. Maybe a little bit underneath this upper part. I'm going to add some shadow right here. Some coming inside as well. A smidge from the inside out right here. Yes, good. And a little bit right here and right here. So we'll start by smidging here, then a bit right here. And let's start with the bottom line, a couple of strokes, and this. Awesome! I actually want to add just a touch of black as well. Oh, forgetting this little smidge. Let's add that little smidge. A little smidge here. Now, maybe a smidge over here as well. And I want to add a touch of black because there are certain sections in black that I covered up. So I'm washing off my brush, dabbing off my paper towel, and I'm going to take just a little bit of black, straight black. And there are certain areas where I lost it. So right here I lost it a little, so I'm going to add it back. Um, where else? I lost it a little bit right here. A little bit from here. So wherever you feel like you lost it, feel free to add it back. Right here I lost some. And you can use small brush for this. You don't have to use medium again. So that not a touch here too. And they'll just a little bit more right here from the outside in. Maybe a touch on the very bottom here. This is absolutely great. Fabulous. Now white. White is the last color for that particular skull. I'm going to wash off my brush and I'll take just a little bit of white again. Not a lot. So we're dry brushing it on and we're going to start right in the middle. We'll dry brush some white right in the middle. We're going to overlap our colors and that's exactly what we're looking for. Then we're just going to add flicks here and there around the edge. Add a flick here. And then a flick here. And a touch here. Yeah, a little bit more in the middle actually. This middle could handle a touch more. A couple brush strokes here to break this up. All right. Maybe a little too much. All right. Smudge them. Great. Um, where else? You can highlight some here. You can highlight some here. Even right here. And on this edge right here. So I will just be using the top edge of my medium brush, but you can use small brush for that because this needs to be quite fine. And anywhere else, if there are spots that you feel like, oh, this could use a highlight, add it in. Even if it's not on my painting, go for it. Uh, I might add a tiny little highlight right here. All right, this is great. I am loving this. We have this skull done. Now we're going to move to the next one. 
number two. So here it's going to be a little more difficult to put them together, like we did with our blue one. So I'm going to try to do this. Let's see if you can see them, or at least I can. I will be able to move things around to show you, which is good, helpful. All right now, this one is more of a warmer colors. So do you see there are beige? There's a bit of that green again. This. Um, brownish green, there's some orangey browns, there's some browns, there's some yellows, and of course black. So I would say those are the colors you're going to be using. And again, we're going to start with somewhat of a base color here, like we did for the other one. And I'm going to use a slightly different base color here. So for the base color here, I'm going to mix more like a very light beige. So I'm going to take some white, so let's put it here, and just to that white, if you have any brown, great, just take a smidge of brown and add it in. And if it turns out a little too pinky, you can add a touch of yellow because it needs to be more on the yellowy side. It's like yellowy beige. It might even be a little too dark. You see what you need for that top color. Oh yeah, this is better. Now this is the color I'm using. It's very, very, very light. This one, almost white. It has like a hint of beige and a bit of yellowness to it. So what I'm going to do with it is I'm going to go right here and I'm going to add quite a bit of this base. I'm going to switch to a smaller brush. This seems, that one seemed a little too big at this point. All right, this is a good base. Now for my next color, I'm going to go a little bit more brown and a little warmer. So it's going to be like an orangey brown. I still have a little bit of that. We use it actually on a bottom part. So if you have it, you can use it. Oh no, that's... Never mind, guys. Forget it. Not going to work. Let's make some new one. So I'm going to start with white. Um... Let's mix it on this spot. So I'm going to start with white, then I'm going to take some yellow, add it in, then some red. That's just white, yellow, and red. And you see it has like a hint of orange to it. That's the color. Might even go a touch darker, but that's the right one. Oh yeah, beautiful. Where is my paper towel? There's my paper towel. Oops. So I'm just going to dab off my brush so I don't have too much paint. And let some of that.
put some on the bottom here. And a smidge here. A little bit right here. Definitely some right here. And actually inside too. Also a little bit here. And of course, definitely some here. All right, this is great. Now we're gonna move to darker color. So to the same that I just used, I'm gonna take even more yellow and more red, mix them up. This is gonna be a straight on orange at this point. And we're just gonna take a couple of brush strokes of that. So we'll add a brush strokes right here, just a few, even a little darker than that. Oh yeah, that's perfect. So just a couple of brush strokes there, and a couple of brush strokes here. And make a flick here and there. All right, now we're gonna move to brown. So to the same mixture, I'm just gonna add a little bit of black. So just a touch. And you see it dimmed up, so not the color I was specifically hoping for. I kind of wanted a little still brighter. So I'm just gonna take a bit more yellow and a touch more red. Oh yeah, that's a good color. See, it's brown, but it's still very warm brown. And I'm gonna add a couple of brush strokes of that right here. You see, it's not crazy dark either. Add a flip here, add a bit of it on top here, yeah, and a bit inside too. Right here. Definitely a bit more right here. Awesome, this is great. Now let's cover the rest of the canvas, the oil the uncovered areas with that greener color. And we're gonna use two version of that, but we're gonna start with a darker version. So technically, because it's gonna be more like a browner green, um, you can take a smidge of brown as a starting point and then just add a yellow to it and a blue and a white. So yellow, blue, and white, not a lot of blue, because blue is a bossy color, you just want to touch. Do you see? Let's try this. Good color, but I need it a little dimmer, so I'm just going to take more white. I'm going to add it in. And you see, it turned into almost like a sage color. So if you have that pre-mixed, you're welcome to use it. I think this is good. I like this color. so. We're going to add some more right here. We we'll overlap this here a little bit. This here, this here. This here for sure. All right, there's a lot of areas actually. 
Now I definitely want to add some on the edge here. Oops. Um, yeah, now I'm going to move to a darker version of that. So I'm going to mix on the same spot. And to the same spot, I'm going to add lots more yellow. Blue, and you see it got much darker. But also black because I want it dimmer again. And remember, that spot already had white on it. So there is white paint mixed into it. So if you were to paint to mix it from scratch, you would be using white, black, yellow, and blue. So you can always start even with a base of gray because white and black make gray. You see darker but also dimmer green color. So with this one, I'm going to add a couple of brush strokes very lightly. Notice how I dabbed off my brush on a paper towel before use. Add some darkness here. Definitely right here, there's going to be a dark spot here. Here. All right, I think that's it for this particular color. Maybe a little bit more here, actually, just like a tiny touch. All right, now black. I kind of want to add a bit more black, so I'm just going to take a bit more black because I feel like I lost some in the process. I'm going to add a bit more black here in the eye. Maybe a little more in the nose. A bit of outline that I lost here. Touch into this green. A little bit on the eye as well. A little bit right here. And just a touch dry brushing it, as you see on the back, kind of march the black into the back of the skull. Now, the only color that's left for here is white. So I'm going to wash off my brush, make sure it's nice and clean. I'll dab it off on a paper towel. And I'll take straight white, but just a little bit. You can even, again, dab it off on a paper towel after taking white on. And there are certain areas that we're going to add white. So we're going to add some right here. Just a little. We're going to add some right here. You see, it's not, it's somewhat transparent as you add it, right? It's not blobby. That's because we're only using a little bit of it. We'll add some right here. A little point right here. A touch here.
looks awesome. The only color I want to add just a touch more off, so I'm going to take a bit of green. I'll mix it with some white to make a very, very light green. I know this light green, I know that's not light enough. It's going to be like a lime, maybe. Yeah, grass green, very light. I'm going to want to add just a touch right here. Awesome. I feel very satisfied right now because this looks wonderful. All right, our second skull is also done. Here's the first one, here's the second one. All right, we have only one more left. So if you guys need to take a break, now is the great time to do it. Again, don't do this if you're tired. This is a very difficult painting. As a lot of masterpieces by famous artists are. So, if you need a break, feel free to do that. And then we're going to move to our last one, which I'm going to move on to my last one now. So again, I'm going to put them side by side so you can see them better. I find it personally very helpful. But again, if you are using original, not my version of it, but actual painting, um, you can just print it out. All right, last one. So here we're going to start again with a base. Let's grab my two brushes here. And I'm going to use the actual medium brush for the base. And I'm going to make like a very light, almost beigey base. So I'm going to take my white. If you have a smidge of brown anywhere, just take a smidge of brown, mix it in, make a very light beige. Um, I think we need to be lighter than this. No, that's good. I'm going to just add that as a base here. Actually, I'm going to switch brush. This seems to be a little uncomfortable because I think that brush is a little too big for that. So let's go to my smallest out of my square brushes here. Okay, now I'm going to move to this slightly darker color to this one. So it's like a brown, but also it's greener. So if this is the color I just used here, I'm going to add a smidge of brown. Again, brown is such a very heavily used color here. So I'm going to add a smidge of brown and I'm going to add a smidge of green. If you don't have green to make green, um, it's yellow and blue, literally, so just a smidge of green. And this has got a little too dark, so I'm going to get some white. So you see, everything is half-tone, everything is pastel. Let's see, let's try it. 
Oh, that's a little too dark, but it is a perfect color for something, right? No, not really. We'll have to mix. So I'm going to add a bit more white to it because it's a little too dark still. It's still a little dark. And it needs to be a little warmer. So I'm going to add a smidge more yellow and a smidge more red. It's going to make it a little warmer here. You see, it's all about adjusting, 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 and adjusting. I am adjusting my color so many times, but it's needed, so it's good. All right, so I'm going to add this here, dry brush it on. Add some more here. Definitely right here. And as you know, I'm going to add another green layer, but this is a good start. All right, where else? Um, let's definitely add some right here. It's a great area to add it. Here as well. Yes, inside here. Right here too. All right, now darker green. If you have, still have something like that, do you remember we used it on a previous color? You can use that, straight that, not even mixed with anything. If not, you can mix it again. It's like a medium darker green, but make sure it's dim. So either add a touch of brown or a touch of black to it. Oh yeah, that's a good color. So. Add some here. Some on the edge. The brush stroke right here. A little bit in the eye. You see right near the black. Trim the bottom. Where else? Um, there's a little spot right here. And I'm pretty sure that is it for our green. So the next color I'm going to use is going to be a warmer brown. Actually, let's maybe go with white first. Let's add white more white. No, let's go with warm brown. So I want to add a little bit of this. Do you see? It's like an orangey brown. So if you have that color, great, use it. If not, again, you're going to grab some yellow. Let's mix it here. White. Red. Yellow, white, red. If you have a touch of brown, you can add it to it, just very little. I think this should be a good color, but you never know. Oh yeah, that's a good color. And we'll just add a couple of very, very small burst strokes right here. And a little bit right here. And even a touch right here. Awesome. Next, I'm going to go right here. I'll add some right here. And then I'm going to move to much darker brown. So for this next brown, you can 
can mix from scratch, you can mix in the same spot. I'm gonna mix in the same spot and I'm just gonna take more red. Do you see lots more red? Lots more yellow. Mix them up and then I'm gonna start adding black little by little. So a touch of black, then another touch of black and so on until it gets pretty dark. And remember, when we mix on a spot, they still had a little bit of white in, so there is technically a touch of white mixed into this paint. It's not like it completely doesn't have any white. It has a little bit. So I'm gonna take a little touch of that. Maybe even dab it off on a paper towel first. And I'm gonna add some right here. And then right here on the side of the nose. Um, a little bit on this bottom part. Definitely right here. Just a touch. And right here. Right here, right here, smidge right here too. All right, that's looking really good. And now we're gonna move. Oh, there's one more very unpredictable, I guess, color in there. That is just a touch of it, which is light blue. So, just take a little bit of white. Add a smidge of blue to it, and also a tiny smidge of yellow, just to make it more like a teal color. Now with this color, we're just going to add a tiny little smidge of that right here, in this corner. Oh, and a little bit right here too. Awesome! And now last color I'm going to add is white. Well. I'm actually going to add black too, but other than that. So I'm going to take some white. I'm going to start right here. Add some white, spread it. Again, I'm not trying to use a lot of white. Really dry brushing it on. Right, and some black, of course. So I'm going to take a little bit of black. Make sure you wash your brush, of course. And I'm going to darken up this because as I was adding, adding other colors, I covered too much of my black. So I'm going to add some of it back.
All right, and that is done. Guys, we did it. Okay, let's take a good look at those. So we have the painting that we just painted, and we have a painting that I painted earlier. Here they are. Let's see if we can see them side by side. Potentially, right? Awesome, 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 awesome job, everyone. Um, feel free to share your results. We love seeing your results. I would love to see how they turned out. And what you could do, um, you can post it on our Facebook page, anywhere in comments, or if you can locate a page that was made specifically for this event, you can, so let me do this one now at this point. We don't need it, right? Great. So, feel free to post it on event page specifically made for this event. Um, I will put link to it to our Facebook page in a description of this video. So if you go on your event stop, you might be able to locate it. If you haven't been too far from when we made an event for it, but if you can't locate it, that's okay. You can post it under comments to any post in our Facebook page. And you can see um, the link to our Facebook page in description of this video and in comments. And guys, if this is your first time joining us, well, I hope you enjoyed it. We do uh, free events about twice a week and we do Zoom events pretty much every day. So if you're interested in doing Zoom events, there's a link to our website as well. So feel free to check it out and see if there's anything you like. Um, feel free to subscribe, definitely. Um, and we have a lot more video recordings that are available here on YouTube, but also on our website. So take a look again, see if there's anything that catches your eye. And guys, if you would like to say thank you by tipping me, I would never say no to that. You don't have to, no obligation. We love doing this. Um, we love making free videos, but tips really do help support us artists. So if you enjoyed it and you would like to tip me, you can find a tip link in the description of this video and also in chat here. So feel free to use that. It's a PayPal link. All right. And that is pretty much it. Thanks again for joining me. And I hope to see you again, guys.